Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Hussein Mosapi and today I'm introducing you to what is known as Static Engineering. Alright, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Alright, so I hope you're all ready to dive into the world of Static Engineering. But before we get started, let me tell you a little story. Now, once upon a time, there was a bridge. There's a beautiful bridge spanning a wide river and connecting two bustling cities let's say this is city one and that is city two and with our imagination we can assume that this was the bridge but one day the bridge started to wobble and sway in different directions cars started to swave and drivers were scared out of their own seats now the poor bridge was in desperate need of us the static engineers to perform our beautiful magic of how we can fix the bridge now, we're the heroes of the day. So, we have to save this bridge from wobbling. We have to keep even buildings from collapsing and make sure that everything stays nice and steady. But now, you don't have to worry. You won't be wearing any capes like superheroes do or any tights. Unless you want to, of course. But in this course, you will learn all about the forces that act upon structures, how to calculate and measure those forces and how to design structures to withstand them. You use math, you also use physics, and basically your own creativity to solve problems and come up with your own innovative solutions. So I hope you engineers are ready to become the supplier of static engineering. So I hope you get your calculators and hope you're adequate. And let's get started. And remember, if you ever get stuck, just think about the wobbling bridge and now you can help the vehicles and the people in it from not having any damage or injuries. All right, let's get started. You know, every time you look at statics, you have to understand one thing, that statics comes from what is known as mechanics. Now, mechanics is a branch of physical science that is concerned with the state or rest or motion of bodies that are subjected to an action of force. So, in simplicity, you could say that Mechanics is subdivided into basic two categories where we look at statics and dynamics. Now, since our main focus is statics, then we'll quickly just look at how we can deal with the equilibrium of bodies. So we're trying to look at how we can deal with the equilibrium of bodies, that is, those that are either at rest. When we say at rest, it means that the body is not really moving or they're moving with a constant velocity. When you say constant velocity, it means that acceleration is basically what? Zero. So now we have put that in that in, we've put that in consideration, we basically also have to look at some basic things that we have under statics. So we have some fundamental concepts that we have to know. Now I'm gonna be a bit quick because fundamental concepts, I know they might be a bit tedious for others, but with a bit of studying you get a hang of it. So fundamental concepts are basically the concepts that we've been learning in different courses. Uh, to be precise, we've learned these things in the basic physics. Fundamental concepts involve things such as the length of an object. So I'll be a bit quick so we can actually move forward to the main topic that I want us to uh, discuss. Now, length just talks about the distance between two points. It is used to calculate the position that is, that is in a particular point in space where you describe the size of the physical system. So basically, length is just a measurement of a particle say, from literally one point to the other. And the units that we use to measure length are what we call meters, symbolized as m. We also have time. Now, time is, let me say, a period, the duration of an event. It is measured in what we call seconds. Then we also have the mass. These are things that we'll be using often. Now mass is simply the measure of the quantity of matter that is used to compare the action of one body uh, that is of another. Uh, so mass is basically just the amount of matter that is possessed within a body. So it's measured in what is known as kilograms. Then we can look at the last one, which is force, so that so we don't look at too many uh, basic quantities. Now, force is simply just a pull or push that is uh, exerted on a body. It is measured in what you know as uh, newtons. 
so let's not forget that now other things i would want you to know are terminologies some terms that will be used often terms like a particle now a particle is anything that has a mass that's in simplicity so we can actually idealize a lot of things in the world as simply just a particle if you don't want to draw a, a full car like that you can just idealize this car as one dot to be a particle just like that we also have other terms like uh, rigid bodies now when we talk about a rigid body it's like we're talking about the entire thing now because a rigid body can be considered as a combination of a large number of particles in which all the particles will remain at a fixed distance from one another now both before and after applying a force that is so we can look at so many things as rigid bodies but a rigid body is not really a particle a rigid body is more than a particle because if you look at a particle we're just focusing on the mass of an object while neglecting other factors but if you look at a rigid body we look at the mass and do not neglect other factors like size and shape of that particular particle so that is basically what a rigid body is and then we also have what is known as uh, concentrated forces concentrated forces from the word concentrated forces okay, let me write that properly so forces okay so from the word concentrated forces when you look at a concentrated force we're looking at the representation of an effect of a load which is assumed to act at a particular point on a body that is what is known as a concentrated force then we can quickly jump into some basic fundamental uh, principles like the newtons have the newton's laws they actually give a broad understanding of what really uh, we'll be looking at in statics so let's look at the newton's three laws of motion now when you talk about newton's three laws of motion you have to first look at the first law um, i'll make it a bit simple now when you talk about the first law we the first law states in simplicity that a particle uh, will remain at rest a particle will remain at rest or it will continue moving in a straight line with a constant velocity provided that there is no external force that is acted upon it so if you have let's say a stone if I, if I if I get a stone and put it in the system room and go to another country provided nobody has touched that stone a stone remain at rest isn't it if at all we had to assume that there was no gravity on earth and I had to throw a stone with a constant um, if I throw a stone and it starts to move at a constant velocity that stone will continue moving in a straight path provided it's not compelled by another uh, object to change its course of direction so that's what it means when you look at the first law it means that a body will maintain its state of rest will continue to move in a straight line provided that there's no other unbalanced force that is acting on it uh, there are basic analogies you can use under the first law to quickly understand it yeah you can say like one of the, the basic funny ways i like to illustrate the first law you can say that a person will continue being single or the person who continues searching for a partner for the rest of their life provided that there is no partner that exists in the world so if you're the only one in the world and you are single that is at rest you will continue being single for the rest of your life provided there's no other person in the world and if you're searching for someone at a constant search you continue searching provided there's no one you'll be moving in a constant search for the rest of your life it's the same thing unless provided a girl you know you meet up a girl or a guy anywhere else so that's basically the concept then we have uh, the second law uh, the second law is a beautiful law it just states that force is equal to m a so the sum of all forces that are acting on the body will equal to the mass by what is known as the acceleration now this is a law that we're going to be using uh, in a lot of problems that we have under mechanics so uh, a particle acted upon by an unbalanced force such as the F will experience an acceleration that has the same direction as the force 
and a magnitude that is directly proportional to the force. Now, if F is the applied force, as you can see, then the particle will have the mass and the acceleration. So if you have a force being applied to a particle here, like that, you, you expect this particle to move in an acceleration manner in the direction of the force applies. If the force was in that direction, you expect the acceleration to move also in that particular direction. So that's what it means. Then lastly, we have the third law. Now the third law is a beautiful law. It states that um, unbalanced forces, unbalanced forces, say I have one particle here and I have another particle there, like that. So let me go with particle A and particle D. Let me okay, say B, not D, just for uniformity. So if I'm having particle A and B, particle A has some force there. So this is well, some force acting on particle A and some random force acting on particle uh, B like that. Now what you have to understand is that unbalanced forces will produce, um, let me not say unbalanced forces. Uh, let me put it in a way you will understand. Uh, to every action, there will always be an equal and opposite reaction. What I mean is that maybe as you're watching this video, you might be seated. So let me assume that this is a seat and you are this particle. Now, since you are a particle, you have a mass and every mass on Earth is subjected to gravity. So when your mass is subjected to gravity, I expect you to have your weight, which is mass times gravity. Now, this weight is an action force. Now, to every action, you expect an equal but opposite reaction force. Now, these are some of the things you will learn uh, as we move on. You'll find that this weight will have an opposite reaction force, which is what is known as a normal force. Now, if I sum up all the forces at this particular point, you'll find that it will give us an equilibrium point where we have zero. This is because to every action, there is an equal but opposite what? reaction so the major forces of action and reaction between two particles sorry between two particles are equal opposite and they will always be collinear be mindful about that so if you have force a and force b acting on one another then the force of b on a will always create something where you have an action being equal to what a reaction so be mindful about that that's the same reason why if you end up slapping uh, I don't know why people, most people have anger issues. So provided you're upset and you just want to relieve that stress, most people end up punching walls or punching any other object. Now, ever wondered what happens when you punch a wall and you feel the pain? Like, isn't that, it's not weird or something. So the reason is simple. To every action, the same force you applied on the wall, the same force you apply on the wall is the same force that, that is bounced back at you. That's the reason why you feel the pain. So the magnitude of the force you apply to the wall will give you an equal magnitude of the force that will bounce back to you. Though there will be certain um, energy convergence that will be present, but mindful that there will always be an equal and opposite reaction that, will, that you will end up feeling. That's the reason why you feel the pain. So basically when you punch your wall, just put in mind that you're punching yourself. So instead of punching the wall, you can always punch your face. Just with your thoughts. Anyway. Let's move on. So now that we know the three uh, uh, laws of motion, we can look at the last law that we need to understand. And this is Newton's law of gravitational attraction. Now this one is a, a beautiful law. It just means that I, or let me say you and I, attracted to each other. Now, Newton's law of gravitational attraction just simply tells us to say there will always be a certain force that will be in between objects. So if this is me, if this is me, and this is you, there will always be a certain force that will be in between us. Okay? Now, this force is directly proportional to them to our masses but inversely proportional to the distance that is between our bodies <laughs> i sound so cheesy but anyway i want you to understand that now because we're human beings our masses are quite small so we don't really put that in consideration when we look at objects we try to look at planets like planet earth planet mars try to see how 
these two planets are attracted to one another. So now, this illustration just simply means that the force F, which is uh, the gravitational attraction force, is equal to G, then mass 1 times mass 2 over the distance that separates this squared. So remember that F is the force of gravitation between two particles, and G is simply just the universal constant of gravitation. According to some experiments or evidence, it is proved that G is equal to 6, 66, sorry, 0 0.73, and this is by 10 to the minus 12 uh, meters cubed, or I could write in like that, kg dot s square without space. Now, this is a constant, so don't worry, you don't have to master it, they'll give you, it's they'll basically provide it to you. Now, m1 and m2 are the masses of each of the two particles and r is simply the distance between the two particles all right let's not forget that all right so there are other things that you have to know concerning the law of gravitational attraction but most questions don't really come on laws of gravitational attraction just wait for thoughts you guys should know this um the laws of motion are a bit important it's not a bit they're very important especially the second law of motion because under statics we'll be summing up a lot of forces, finding reactions, doing so many thoughts, so, so, so many things. Now, other basic foundational things you have to know are things like rounding off numbers, finding significant figures, and so on and so forth. So be mindful that in a nutshell, I'm trying to set the statics. Statics is just one way in which you want to study bodies that are at rest or bodies that are moving with a constant velocity. That is, they have no acceleration. And if they have no acceleration, the sum of all the forces is equal to mass times zero acceleration. It simply means that the sum of all forces, which could be in any axis, could be x or y, or is equal to zero. So this is a static law. Be mindful. You can't have the sum of all forces giving you some motion. Automatically, if you end up having motion, you don't, you don't, you don't really have the statics, but you now have the dynamics. So be mindful that in statics, you don't have motion. The sum of all forces will always be zero. And the mind for the particle is simply just anything with a mass. While we neglect the size. But a rigid body does not really deform. That's something you have to know. And for a rigid body, you don't really neglect the size and shape. We consider all those factors. So be mindful about everything we've looked at. You have to memorize the three laws of motion and also know the basic quantities. To know that mass is always measured in kgs always on that length is always in meters and so on and so forth all those things are, are most of the important things that you have to know how to convert units and the like now this was just an overview of the intro of static engineering and i hope you guys understand if you have queries you can always reach me on whatsapp on 077-149-5252 all right now I want us to dive into a new topic that is very, very nice. And that's the basic topic that I want you to understand. This topic will cover a lot of things that we'll do. If you understand the topic that we'll do next, then you'll be very safe under statics. And that topic that we're moving on to is simply known as force vectors. Or like I love to call it, I call it vector analysis. All right, so see you then. Remember to like and subscribe. And be mindful that small progress is better than no progress. At least strategize to avoid becoming a statistic. And strong push for that A+.